I'm Daniel. I'm Jay-Z. This is Just My DIY. It might be cold outside, but it is getting hot in here. So I'm going to go do my no, day job. No, no, no. <laughs> Not that kind of channel. Sit down. <laughs> it's Hi. getting hot in here because we're going to show you how to burn designs into wood without using a laser. We're going to use instead a heat tool and another heat tool that might activate some chemicals to create burn patterns in wood. That's right. We're going to show you three different methods to put burn designs onto wood. And as always, have a safety net of a fire extinguisher when dealing with this much heat. <laughs> We're going to show you these three different ways, start to finish, right now. <laughs> to start, we're going to cut some designs out of vinyl using a graphic we found on designbundles.net. We're cutting with a StarCraft Solo. Of course, you can use a Cricut or Silhouette. We just love the matless cutting of the Solo. This is permanent vinyl, and you're going to weed the opposite of what you normally would because the negative space here is what you're going to burn into wood. Now we have the wood prep. Three phases of sanding, a 120 grit, a 240 grit, and a 400 grit. You want it nice and smooth to alleviate any potential bleeding with some of these methods. And what kind of wood are we using? We're using birch plywood. This is three quarter inch plywood we found at Home Depot. Nice. Now we have three stencils because we're trying three different methods. The type of vinyl doesn't matter just as long as it's permanent. So we're going to put some transfer tape down and scrape it down. We actually really do like using the Cricut transfer tape because you get more reuses out of it. Interesting little tidbit for you guys, reuse your transfer tape. And we're going to start peeling everything back. We're going to double check to make sure that we're not losing things inside our negative space as we're losing the backing. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put it into the spot where we're going to do our test. And I think they call it brandishing it down really well because this is going to define the lines with some juicy stuff. Juicy. <laughs> like my dancing earlier. That was not juicy. <laughs> so juicy. <laughs> Just make sure that you scrape this down really well and you'll see we pull our transfer tape back. We pull it back basically on top of itself. That just makes sure no of none of the vinyl lifts as you're pulling it off. We're gonna do a nice little label so that we don't forget what we're doing. <laughs> Gotta keep everything straight. <laughs> and now we're ready to move to the next step. Before we can put any solutions down on these, we are going to double check and make sure all of our edges are down. So we're just using our finger and pressing down around all of the edges. Now it's time to prep the one that we're gonna use the wood burning tool on. And to do that, we're going to outline it using a mechanical pencil. This is very important because the lead on this is really thin, so we're able to get good outlines on it. Once we have the outline accomplished, we're just going to go ahead and peel the vinyl right on off. Is that right? On, off? Right on, off. All right. On, <laughs> off. You can see it and I left a nice pencil design behind, which somebody gets to trace. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to use the Scorch Marker Pro and get that solution down on the wood. Once you get the Marker Pro out of its original container, yeah, give it a good shake like it's a paint pen because it pretty much is. You got to mix that solution on up. You gotta press the tip down to get it primed. And it also comes with, on the other side, a nice spongy applicator. So there's one for more detailed work and then when you have bigger areas, that's when you would use the sponge tip. So to start, we're gonna use just the marker tip. You'll see using very light strokes here. This is pretty much real time. The biggest thing is to not oversaturate with the solution. It's very liquidy and does have a propensity to bleed if you put too much down at one time. So, don't let it bleed. <laughs> We're going to use the sponge tip after we blot 
to fill in the big space in the middle. That's right, again, trying not to use too much, but paying special attention to those edges. This does show up a little wet on the wood, but you can miss a spot if you're not being careful. Once that's down, we blot again, take out any excess. Again, we're just really trying to avoid that bleeding. Now the ammonium chloride solution. We're gonna start with a nice clean mixing container. We're gonna pull out our measuring spoons, our thicket, and ammonium chloride. And we'll link everything that we use down below. We got both of these off of Amazon. So you'll see we're using four teaspoons of thicket. I'm gonna seal that back up, pull out the half tablespoon, and measure half a tablespoon of ammonium chloride. Doesn't need to be exact science, but be something close. Warm water by a quarter cup, spilled and added, stirred, not beaten. <laughs> and we can allow that to sit after a thorough mixing for about five minutes. You'll see that it does start thickening up as you're mixing it. it it has a nice consistency to it, but you'll see after this five minute break, it got even thicker, which is exactly what we wanted. And this means it's ready. You're gonna grab a little paintbrush and apply generously, but not excessively. We want a complete coating all the way into the edges of the design without pushing the design up and without creating an excess for us to just blot off later. Because this is so thick, you don't need a whole lot. Don't glop it on top of your stencil. It's not gonna soak into the vinyl, so any extra that you have does have the propensity for flicking off and getting on your wood somewhere else. So just be judicious in the amount that you use here. And there you can see it on the vinyl design. So we're gonna go ahead and blot that off and blot off any sort of excess. Ultimately, we let this sit on for about an hour before we started this next step. Peeling the vinyl. That, that's the next step. <laughs> it is, you don't wanna apply the heat on top of the vinyl because you'll see we're working at really high temperatures. Uh, but also you notice you can't really use gloves, so wash your hands right after this. And you can see the design remnants left over. It's kind of shiny on that one, there on that one, and that's still penciled. We are gonna use a mask during this. This is an organic vapor filter mask. And getting our heat gun set to 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. This right here is real time. You'll see exactly how much we're moving the heat gun. You wanna keep it a couple inches away, but keep the heat gun moving to avoid scorching your wood. Also keep in mind that the wood is probably gonna get really hot too at 1100 degrees. <laughs> so if you need to have a nice safety oven mitt style glove for handling the wood afterwards, you know, think ahead. Once it starts getting dark though, it really starts to pop and the more heat, the darker it gets. We're going for as darker, you know, as close to black as we can on this. So we stayed on top of it for about seven to eight minutes with the heat gun for this particular version. And you can see how it turned out. We'll give you more close-ups later. Now we're gonna use the Scorch Marker Pro heat up time. And this <clears throat> took a minute took about 11 minutes actually. So you can see that it does start turning, but when it starts turning, okay, it takes a while to actually get it to that dark. And it never got as dark as the ammonium chloride solution, so we kept trying to stay on top of it and ended up scorching the wood a little bit, uh, which was kind of a bummer because it just never got that dark, dark burn on it. And now, the wood burning tool. 
So we got this off of Amazon. It's not the best, it's also not the cheapest, but it was a good middle set with a number of attachments. It doesn't come with the needle nose pliers or the silicone mat, and we highly recommend you have those. As a reminder, here's our outline that Daniel's gonna follow. Now, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm choosing a tip that I thought would work out well for doing outlines, especially since this is curved and I'm basically going to be changing the tips as often as I think I can find a better tool for what I'm trying to do. But this is going to take a while because it colors in dark. If you do it right, you can get some nice sharp edges. If you don't do it right, which you'll see in a few areas, it doesn't look that great. And it's really hard to fix once you've burned into it because it does create a three-dimensional issue rather than just a superficial issue. As you're working with different tips, we do recommend having a piece of scrap wood off to the side that you can just make sure that your tips are heating up on. We'll show you how we change them when they're hot, but in the meantime... We get to play with different little designs that come along with the kit. Instead of filling in the dark of this area with nothing but dark, we were like, hey, let's put a grid work of something in here. And you can see it didn't fill out completely, so I found a nice little tip that would give us an accurate drawing capacity. And you see him using those needle nose pliers to screw and unscrew the tips, and that's because they are so hot, but that allowed us to not have to wait for everything to cool down. And so I finished by trying my best to freehand in any remainder design. And he did a great job. So that's how this one turned out. And we'll take a quick look at all three before we tell you what we thought about the different methods. The ammonium chloride solution, the scorch marker pro, and the wood burning tool. Here are the results of our three wood burning experiments no lasers. The wood burning tool is a really fun option to explore. I think it has the possibility to get really crisp lines and the creative license you can have with it is awesome to put different patterns and everything. Uh, it was the most time intensive, but if you want to develop that skill, uh, that's a really interesting option. And by developing that skill, she means I haven't touched one in 25 years. So chances are someone out there can save some time and do a much better job than I did. Now we have the scorch pen, which is simple as open the package, draw out your stencil, add heat, you're good to go. Unless, of course, you let it bleed a little bit too much and you had to use a lot of heat in order to activate it, which may have actually scorched the wood outside the design, but yeah. it produced some quick, easy results. It was the fastest, but we felt of the two chemical solutions, the one with the biggest propensity to make a mistake. Which brings us to the last one, which was ultimately our favorite for our skill level, the ammonium chloride and thicket solution. Because it is so thick, you don't have that possibility as much for bleeding under the stencil. And when it came to heating it, it was the fastest of those two. And we got it really dark in about 10 minutes. So if you liked what you saw, you should click the like button, subscribe, ring the bell. If you have a burning question, go ahead and ask it in the comment line. And of course, know that everything that we use to do this is listed in the description below. Also in the description are all of our social handles. Don't forget to connect with us across platforms. We love hearing from you. And also check out our blog at JustMightDIY.com. And search for a mysterious channel that there may or may no not exist somewhere. It's not listed in the description. There are no other channels. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a good day.